Okay, we're at the point of our sock where we're going to start knitting the heel and I wanted to show you a short row technique that I learned uh, that I love because it does not leave little uh, holes at the short row heel technique. So we're going to get started here. Um, I'm on needle one. You can see I have needle two hanging down here and I'm not going to be concerned with that for quite some time here and I have some opened safety pins ready to go. And so the first step is to just go ahead and knit through this row until you get to the just before the last stitch that's on the needle. So I'm going to do that. Knit through all my stitches here. And then when you have one stitch left on the end there, we're going to turn around and go back as if we're going to do a purl row here. And the next thing you're going to do is slip this stitch without knitting it to the right needle. Slip the first stitch, so now you have two on the right needle, all the rest on your left. Then we're going to attach a safety pin to the working yarn and just let it hang there and go ahead and purl back. And I like to keep the whole of the safety pin out of my knitting. It makes the stitches a little bit tighter and neater. So we're just going to let that hang right there and we're going to purl back until we just have one stitch left on the other side. And we're at that point right now and again we're going to just turn the work as if we're going to do another row and same thing. Slip one of the stitches, attach a safety pin to the working yarn, hang it in the back there and then start knitting, whoops, just get my safety pin out of the way there and knit back. Oh, I did slip a stitch. That may be confusing. This is the last stitch on the needle. This is the slip, the stitch I slipped. I have the safety pin attached to the working yarn and I'm going to knit back. I knitted in the back of that stitch because it was twisted when I put it back on. Knit back through until you have two stitches left. So you can see now we have two stitches left. I'm going to turn the work, slip one stitch. I'm inserting the needle purl wise by the way when I slip the stitch. I'm going to attach a safety pin to the working yarn. You don't want to split the yarn with the pin, you just want it around to hold the spot. And I'm going to purl back until I have two stitches. So each row, the first row, one stitch left on each needle, knit and purl. Second, two stitches left on each needle, knit and purl. So here I am where I have two. I'm going to turn the work. All this time I'm completely ignoring these stitches left on these other needles. We're not using them right now. I'm going to slip one stitch, attach a safety pin to my working yarn, and knit back and again until this time we're going to do three stitches. When I do this, I usually keep a little piece of paper next to my knitting where I mark down when I'm at one, two, and three. Because if you get interrupted, it's really easy to forget where you are. And it's hard to see in the knitting. After you've done it a while, you'll be able to see it where you should be. Now we have three. I'm going to turn the work, slip one stitch, attach a safety pin to the working yarn, purl back to when to three stitches left on the needle. 
doesn't really matter how these safety pins, it, I, at first I was trying to make them line up and look pretty and it, honestly it makes no difference at all as long as they're there holding that tiny little loop that will be made from the yarn, the working yarn passing over the slipped stitch. And if you're really good you can just leave off the safety pins and find that yarn but I think that's kind of risky. Okay, so I'm purled back till I have three left. Turn the work, S uh, slip a stitch, attach a safety pin, and now just for brevity, if I was actually knitting, uh, this, this is a sample piece, but if I was actually knitting the heel of the sock, the pattern would probably tell me how many stitches should be left in between here. And so you would follow those instructions. Typically it's half of the, no the total number of stitches that you have on this needle. If you have a narrow foot, you might want to do a little more than half. If you have a particularly wide foot, you might want to do a little less than half. But that's the overall general rule. But we're going to go ahead and do the second step now uh, just to save time. So you would knit back to the first <clears throat> just beyond the first safety pin and you would know those num that number of stitches depending on how many you were leaving in between. I'm going to knit back until I have three left on the needle because that's where I last did this step. And notice that my last safety pin is to the right of my knitting so make sure that that's what happens to you and then you're just going to pull that yarn up. So you have a tiny loop on it. You're going to pull it up, stretching it a little bit, and slip it onto the needle. I'm having trouble doing that. I've got to pull harder. And you can remove the safety pin. And so now you've added a stitch to the needle and you're going to knit that stitch together with the next stitch. Just like that. Then you're going to turn the work and start back, purling again until now because I stopped at three stitches left on the needle, I'm going to purl back until I have three stitches on the left needle. And it's a little bit different on the purl side so that um, it will look exactly the same. Just for aesthetics, it'll look nicer if you do this little maneuver on the purl side. So I'll show you what that is. Going till I have three stitches left. Again, the safety pin is to the right of the working needle. On the purl side, instead of just pulling up the yarn and putting it over the needle and purling two together, I'm going to slip this stitch to the right needle just temporarily. And it looks like you're dragging it kind of far, but don't worry about that. Just pull that stitch up, just like we did on the other side. Get rid of the safety pin. And then put this stitch back onto the left needle. So you've just rearranged the order of them and to make it exactly the same as the knit side. And then you're going to purl those two together. And what that does is it just makes on the outside of your socks, both sides of the heel will look exactly the same. And then we're going to turn the work. We're going to knit back till we have two stitches left. And repeat the whole process and I'll go through it just one more time so that you've got a handle on it. Um, and then I'll show you what we're going to do on the very last row. There's a little trick to not getting a he uh, gap at the top of that short row heel. I'm so excited to find this technique because I can't even tell you how many socks I've knitted with a gap there that just drove me crazy and I tried to pick up a stitch in between and it just nothing ever looked right. Okay, so we're left, we have two left here. I'm going to pull that one up, put it on the needle, get rid of the safety pin. Oh, I got it caught in there. Knit these two together. Turn the work. 
It's a little fiddly, but you'll be so happy with the results. Pearl back. Got until we have two. Again, on the pearl side, remember, we're going to slip that stitch to the right needle. We're going to pull this up. Get it on there. Get rid of the safety pin. Oh, I got a mess going with my safety pin here. It's like caught. Put this stitch back on, purl those two together, and now you're at a point where you just have one safety pin left on each side. And so this row is going to be different than all the others in order to avoid that gap I was telling you about. So you're going to knit back. I like to pull this stitch kind of tight because that'll eliminate gaps too. So you're knitting now until you only have one stitch left. You're going to pull up that stitch like we've done before. Knit it together with its neighbor, the last stitch on the needle. Just like we did before, but now instead of turning, you're going to pull these stitches onto the flexible part of that needle. You're going to continue on knitting through the front of the sock. This wooden needle is not the best for this. It's much nicer when you have two metal needles, but I just wanted the contrast. So we've just knit all these needles or all these stitches on this needle. Pull that one through. And the very last step. Is now since we're on the knit side instead of the purl side when we're handling this, we're just going to pull that stitch up onto the very end of the needle because remember it needed to be uh, knit or purled together with the last stitch. We don't have to do any of the slipping because we're on the knit side and we're just going to knit that stitch together with its neighbor. Pull it kind of tight and keep going. <laughs> 